first of all, welcome and well done for <clears throat> excuse me getting through the school day to 3.30 to um, join a session, um, which is online, but hopefully um, you're up for a little bit of interaction because there's a bit coming your way. So I'm Sadie Besley. I'm the Director of Operations in Ransad um, Education and Ransad Public Service. So, so welcome, everybody. So you're going to um, be meeting Chris Misselbrook. Some of you may have met him already at, at a previous Academy show. So the chat waving his hands right now for you. Um, he's going to talk to you about creating a positive well-being culture at school. Things that you, practical things that you can start doing or stop doing, um, start doing more of. What things you can share with your team and co-create to create your own culture um, in your own organisation. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Chris, who's going to keep you entertained for the next 40 minutes or so. Thanks. Love it. Thank you, Sadie. Um, welcome, everybody. So, yeah, as Sadie said, my name is Chris Misselbrook, and um, I'll just explain a little bit about who, who I am for anyone who has not come across me before, and then we'll jump in, get to know you a little bit more. If you, um, whilst I'm talking, in the chat box, so open up the chat box and just write in there where in the UK or around the world that you are from, just so that we can start connecting. You never know, there might be someone um, from a neighbouring school that you don't know that you can kind of connect with. So use it as a networking session. So put the area of the UK or the world that you are Manchester, thank you. Aaron, Gotris, we're all Chelmsford, absolutely. Get them in there, Luton, Becky, love it. So yeah, keep that going. Um, so my name's Chris. I am a teacher, PE teacher, secondary school PE teacher, and I'm also a mental health and wellness coach. And I've been doing um, a lot of work over the last few years within schools, within my own school, other schools, teachers, head teachers, on supporting people to overcome stress and, and avoid burnout. I won't go into too much of my story because I don't want to waste time, but I'll share my website with you at the end. It's mindfirst.uk, but on there is, is my story of burnout, that if you, any of your staff or yourself are struggling with symptoms of burnout, then have a look on there. There's some videos about my experience. It might just support you and make you feel less alone because it can be quite lonely. But this is not a webinar about burnout. This is a positive webinar about how to create a positive well-being culture in your school, but from yourself. So taking responsibility for your own behavior. So individuals taking responsibility for how they contribute towards a well-being culture. So moving forward, I, I want you just to write in the chat box if if you were in the, so I'm just gonna make the chat box big for me to see. So thank you for those people who from oh we got this is great people from Peterborough um Tara from Rochdale great stuff so put in the chat I was there if you were in London put in the chat I've read it if you read the blog that I wrote and that Randstad shared on on the three P's just so I can get a bit of a flavor for and also put I wasn't there um and I missed it or I haven't read it just so I can get a bit of a flavor for for who's who's on our call today so we've got 41 people, which is fantastic. Some people might join join through. Okay, that's great. Love it. Okay, some people have read it. Some people will share it afterwards for people to read. I don't know if, Sadie, you've got the link to the, um, or Caitlin to, to put it in the chat box for people who haven't read it. But it will kind of support what we're going to go through here. Paul Jones, I haven't read it. So hopefully you can, you can read it after. Rachel Webster hasn't read it. Um, you're in for a treat. Um, when you do read it. Um, okay, so this session, I've got a model, a three P's model, which I'm going to share with you as we go through. And it is about you, three things that individuals can do that make a massive, massive impact on, on the well-being culture in, in the environment and for our context in a school. But the, the thing I want us all to realise is that we... So we have mirror neurons in our in our brains that, that sort of emit positive or negative vibes and, and that other people play off of that. Um, so you kind of if you're feeling positive, give out a positive vibe. If you're feeling negative, you give out a negative vibe. And this is 
this is really crucial to to culture. But what we're going to do now is actually, well, in fact, before we do that, you don't know what that is yet. Um, put in the chat what you think, from your point of view, a positive well-being culture looks like, sounds like, and feels like. You can do all three or just one. So what does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? Just pop that in the chat now. Just positive well-being culture. What does it look like, feel like, sound like? Okay, just waiting for people to, to write that in. I'm sure people are, are tapping away. Feels optimistic, calm, but able to discuss. Thank you, Rose. For staff being able to confidently express how they're feeling within the workplace. Becky, thank you. Sounds like you're being listened to. Feels calm, looks calm on the surface, quiet, purposeful, supportive. Everyone getting on. I love that, Jane. Safe, Tara, yet. Yeah, love that. Physically safe and emotionally safe as well. If positive wellbeing culture looks like happy and motivated stuff, sounds like positive comments and laughter. Laughter, I love that. Absolutely. Often people miss that out. Feels like where I want to be, where I want to work for. It's calm, confident to talk to. Mary, Paul, thank you for your contributions. So hopefully everyone, if you haven't written in the chat, loads more people jumping in there, thank you. I want you to now all think of one person who embodies those characteristics. One person who has those values, those qualities in your workplace, or it might be outside of your workplace, doesn't really matter too much, but imagine that person. Just take a moment to really sort of visualize them. It doesn't have to be a real person. You could create a fictional person. And I want you all to commit to this process. Some of you will, some of you won't, and that's okay. I just saw one from Paul Jones, our deputy head of the school. That's fantastic. That is, that is brilliant. And as I play some music, I want you all just to gently close your eyes. We're going to do a visualization exercise that hopefully will help you to really feel what or the importance of someone taking responsibility for their behavior and someone impacting others. So just close your eyes. If you feel more comfortable for this bit, not sharing, uh, not um, putting your camera on, that's fine, but don't worry too much about it. Just close your eyes. Okay, now imagine this person, whether real or fictional, give them a name. What behaviors do they demonstrate? Some of those things we we're just talking about, what do they actually demonstrate? And now I want you to step into their shoes, their perspective. Oh, it was the deputy head. Step into their perspective. What thoughts does that person have about their work. What thoughts do they have about their work? And what thoughts do they have about their colleagues? Are they always looking for people making mistakes or something different? Always looking to celebrate what people are doing well. Now I want you to take this person and place them in a room in, in your school or a corridor or another place in the school, wherever, just to sort of place them there, step outside of their shoes and back into yours. And now visualize yourself walking past them. How do they interact with you? You stop, you talk to them. What do they say to you? How do they say it? How do they stand? What's their body language telling you? How do they engage with you? How do they get distracted? Do they make eye contact? Do they talk to somebody else walking past the corridor? Or do you feel valued and valued um, that they value valuable to them? Are they smiling? Are they frowning? Someone spoke about laughter earlier. Are they making you feel good and laughing with you? Or not? And now thank them for the conversation. 
and then move forward in your day. When you're ready, just gently open your eyes if you had them closed. And now I want you to come to the chat box and just take, I'm gonna give people one minute maximum, but right in the chat box, how they made you feel. Be as descriptive as possible. How did they make you feel? Valued, Nia, thank you. Jane, worthy, valued, love it. Rachel Webster, supported, happy, calm, like my thoughts matter. Rose, noticed, I love it. Keep, keep firing them in. Once you've written that, I want you to, to add in three things they did that positively influenced your mood. What did they actually do that made you feel valued, that made you feel noticed, that made you feel confident, supported, that great stuff? What three things did they physically do? Sense of belonging, valued. Caroline, thank you. my or a question rose love it if you've got a notepad there as well write these things down in a notepad paul jones this might be your deputy head paul smiled made eye contact actively listened mary uh, appeared to concentrate on you smiled seemed genuine and genuinely interested beautiful i love it thank you everyone for your your engagement there i'm going to just pause there if you've got more things please do put it in the chat um keep that chat going um so in the in the chat box which i'm i'm, I'm watching i can see you um in there so yeah ha, yes or no do you believe that the person's thoughts about their work and the people they worked with influence their behavior and actions just put y or n just for simplicity if you're on a mobile phone you can do that easily Okay. Did their behavior influence the mood of someone else? So i.e. yourself talking to them, like most of you who in the chat sort of said yes, but um, yes or no, or we'll write something else if you've got something else to, to comment on, please, please do. It could be a simple yes or no, or it could be a little bit more complex for, for you. And please write that in as well. So does the mood of of someone influence the culture of well-being in a school so hopefully hopefully most of you if not all of you will appreciate that it absolutely does and this is this is a crucial thing this is a thing i believe having coached a lot of head teachers having coached a lot of teachers through their own challenges i know that and also coach sort of head teachers on how they can change the um, the culture of their school. But when a lot of people are struggling emotionally, mentally with mental health or in work, and they're not happy with the work, a lot of the time it comes down to the way that they have been treated by a leader. And, and loads of people put on the, the chat about valued, being valued. And it normally comes down to the individual not feeling valued by a um, by a leader in in their workplace, and that's where this this training really really comes in because some simple simple things can make such a massive difference. And these these things are often really overlooked, um, undervalued, and and not taught on leadership courses there obviously there's so much to do with leadership and schools and planning and teaching and all that good stuff but ultimately the energy that we put out makes a massive massive difference and of course with that in mind you can't control directly the behaviors of other people 
So you can influence it. And I genuinely believe you can with your energy, you can influence others, but you can't really control whether someone else is positive or how they choose to behave. So my, my main message for you here and what I want you to take away from this training is improve your own mental well-being or well-being behaviors, and it will improve the culture that you are in. Positive well-being behaviors influence team culture. Po write that down. Positive well-being behaviors influence team culture. So if you own your behavior and increase your self-awareness around this, that is going to have a massive, massive difference. OK, so let's get into the three P's. Um, what can you do to own your behavior and and increase your self-awareness? Um, the three P's model, I'm just going to um, go ahead and share my my screen here. Um, has three. Some of you will be aware of this already. If you if you saw um, my my talk in the Excel Center at London. Okay. Thumbs up, Caitlin. Are we are we sharing? Are we good? Yes, perfect. Happy, happy days. Um, so here we go. We've got three, three P's, being positive, being praising, and being present. And these, these three things, if we do these three things, if we think about these three things when we're moving through our day, when we're having conversations with people, even if you're having challenging, difficult conversations, you can still do these three three things and make the other person feel valued. So I want you to commit to taking action and raising your personal game. We can always do more with this. Some people are fantastic, but we can always do more. And you can even take this model and share it with your team as well, whether you're a head teacher, CEO, um, or I know there might be some just classroom based teachers on here, but I think most people that are leaders and just share this with with your team just to raise their own self-awareness as as well. So we're going to dive into the first one, be positive. Some of these strategies are the same as what in London and some are new. So some things that you can do to raise your personal mood. Now, this is this is really important. This is being positive with others. But it's also about you ensuring that you look after your own well-being so that you can be positive. Um, everyone has slightly different routines, things that make them feel positive. But journal journaling, journaling is a great tactic. Write about what went right in your day. So for many head teachers, my wife is a head teacher, so I know how challenging it can be. But even deputy heads, assistant heads, or just a class teacher, uh, that's in fact, I, I hate I just said that. Nothing of just about being a class teacher. But if you don't have responsibility and leadership in the school, then you can still do this as well. And it still has a really, really positive impact. What went right in your day? Because there is loads of stuff that doesn't go right. And if we dwell on those things, if we bring those things home with us, that does not spread um, positivity. So journal at the end of the day or the start of the day, what, what went right? Celebrate the positives, what's going well, what's going well for you, your team, your school, and do this authentically as well. So if you're talking to your staff um, and you have a piece of paper, so if you're a member of the senior leadership team and you're in a meeting and you are reading off a bit of paper saying, uh, well done, blah, 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 well done, this was great, this was great, and then you move on, that doesn't necessarily give out the positive vibes. So put the bit of paper down and, and be there and really celebrate it with us. Your body language, as you've just experienced with an individual and being present and eye contact and all that good stuff makes such a difference. Avoid the news or draining people or excess alcohol. So that avoid is key. So what can you avoid to be positive and I want if anything resonates with you here I want you to write it down so as, as you're going through I'm expecting people to reflect on their own sort of behaviors and your own habits and and what, what you can do to raise your your game reframe negative thoughts so let's just stick with that for a minute let's hop into the chat box and feel free I'm just gonna stop sharing 
so that I can see the chat box. Actually, I think I can do both. Put in the chat box if a, a negative thought that you might have. Um, don't know, this is quite personal, so there's no need to share. Um, if no one shares, then that's absolutely fine. I'll move forward. But I'm just out of curiosity, I just want to take this. Um, and then I can I can talk through potentially how how some can be reframed. Okay. Um, oh wow, fantastic. Thank you. So yeah, unfortunately, checking the news can be helpful in planning your journey to work, but then you can't unsee the negative stories of the day. Okay, Nia, good tactic for that. Google Maps when you're planning your journey to work, depending on how you travel. Um, if you're traveling by car then check it google maps will actually tell you whether there's traffic or not and the speed and then you can avoid the the news so um maybe that's helpful i don't know um rose i journal neg the negatives i need to switch that to recognizing the positives okay rose there's there's nothing wrong with journaling about the negatives okay we all need to emotion dump so what my advice to you here is carry on doing the negatives because that gets it out once you've done that half a page a page whatever it might be then underneath three positives so that you always finish on what's gone well um give me a thumbs up if that's helpful rose so uh, the the negatives in the chat because i can't see you um oh great uh i'm not doing a good job maria thank you for your honesty there um that is so big in what what your job is um that that's a really big statement. So what I'd advise you to do is break it down. Which areas of your job do you feel like or believe you're not doing a good job in? Don't say everything. And then look at, actually, where are you going well? What is working well for you? And then look at what you don't think is going well. And is that a belief because of insecurities of your own? Or is that the truth? And maybe you can ask a colleague about that. Um, or you can just, in so that's finding evidence, but reframing that, I'm not doing a good job. Well, you are somewhere. I promise you that. So work that out. What one thing did you do in the day that actually made an impact, whether it was a little conversation with a student, a colleague, one email that you sent. And if you get to the end of the day and you feel, um, so I'm not doing a good job, Maria, Maria, I'm soon to hear, and you still feel like you haven't done a good job, well then send one email to a member of staff to make their day, to celebrate something that they've done. And then you can sell that in a voice, I'm not doing a good job. So yes, I am, I've done this one thing well, all right? Um, okay, I'm gonna move on in a second, but uh, having a heavy workload, negative thought, I don't have enough time to do what I need to do, Paul Jones. Um, OK, so uh, this is an interesting one, Paul. Uh, Paul, can you just put in the chat for me what your role in school is? Head of school, primary. Thank you. Um, so there, there's always going to be loads of, of stuff, obviously, to do. But um, one of the head teachers that I've, uh, I'm coaching at the moment, one of the first things that she shared with me was that she was spending 10 hours doing the governor's report on a weekend, five hours on a Saturday, five hours on a Sunday. And then when we broke that down, it took her about three or four hours to write it. And the rest was just going back over it and back over it and back over it. I gave her two things. Um, one, work out how long she should spend on each section and then time it and then hold yourself accountable to that time and be free of any other distractions. And we'll come on to being present in a second. That's one of the P's. But being present with the task that you're doing is also really important. So um, being unavailable. So phone out, put your emails down um, and really being present with the task. And then the second thing I gave to her was this idea of done is better than perfect. So as, as teachers, we're trained right from our, our very first day in the classroom when we're training to look at everything we can do better perfectionism is something that runs through uh, most teachers and um, but actually the truth is done is better than perfect because perfectionism per perfect doesn't exist because my perfect is different to yours paul but your 50 percent might be my perfect or your 50 percent might be actually good enough for whatever task you're doing so break it down and just um, write, write that down and, and everyone like done is better than perfect. So just get tasks done. Um, 
obviously uh, we can't go into too much detail paul please feel free to contact me if that is a serious issue for you um but what i'm hoping to tell you is you do have enough time even though you don't believe me um it's just how you use your time that is um uh sort of we can try and reframe um okay i'm pleased that was helpful it's really difficult just sort of uh, without being too interactive but i'm glad that was helpful um right thank you for your comments that that's fantastic um we are going to move forward through the next few things so as i'm going like write down what uh, just one thing or more that you can personally do to be more positive smile when walking past stuff exercise in the morning or morning movement absolutely brilliant one in the morning you have more cortisol running around your body than at any other time of the day cortisol being the um a negative hormone we want dopamine we want serotonin running around exercise releases serotonin and dopamine so if you can exercise and that doesn't mean going for the fastest mile in the world just going out for a morning walk will do that and just start releasing these hormones that will make you positive um music music raises the vibe all right listen to your favorite music soundtrack on your way to school um it will it will just lift your your mood um okay in the chat one thing and it may not be any of those um i'm pointing at the screen it's not yours um one thing in the chat that you think you can do to raise your personal positivity levels before you get into the school building one thing commit let's make a commitment what are you going to do because this if you can turn up in a positive genuinely positive frame of mind that will ripple out of you Thank you for the feedback. I'm, I'm glad it's, it's useful for you. Eat a nice breakfast, Jane. Hallelujah. I love that. Um, remember one of yesterday's positives. Listen to music. Not get frustrated on your journey to work, Mary. Great. Fabulous. Thank you. Oh, that's good. Um, music idea on the way to work. A lot of people listen to the news on the way to work. If you look at the stories, there are is a ratio of negative to positive, not in the favor of positive. So it's going to just wire in negative things, worries. Listen to music. You will arrive and feel so different. Um, write it down on your pad. What are you going to do? I promise you there's so much science that backs this up. There's so much evidence. There's so much um, experience that I've got working with people that this makes such a difference. Um, so one one thing that you're going to do and then sh you can share this idea with your staff as well if anyone is struggling and you feel better um you feel better there's a great um there's a great idea of um just going back to being positive is so if, if you have a glass of water and you put some dirt in it just some soil and the soil represents the negative stuff you could spend time trying to fish out all the negative stuff or you can just put more water in, more of the good stuff, and the negative stuff flows away. Um, obviously, that doesn't um, cover all areas of life. But it's just one sort of idea that actually adding more positive positivity in does dilute the negative stuff. All right, doesn't remove it totally, depending on on what your personal negativity is, um, but it's a really good idea. Okay, moving forward. So be present um being present three ways of being present present with yourself present with your staff present with your task that you are trying to do and reflect on that as we're going through these things write down one thing that you can do two things three things whatever it might be for you but raise your self-awareness towards this own own your behavior so listen to understand without planning your response so many people will be in a conversation thinking about what they're going to say next instead of listening to the person and then asking a question to validate what they're saying or check for understanding. Eye contact, but don't stare. There's a difficult balance there. You don't want to um, freak people out. So eye contact with the person shows you're really listening to what they're saying. Avoiding distractions, side conversations. If you're in a corridor and you're having a conversation with someone as someone walks past, it's really tempt that you want to speak with. It's really tempting just to call their attention and say something to them and then go back to the person 
ask yourself the question, does that person that you were originally speaking to feel valued, that what they were saying to you is valuable? Um, the short answer is no. Um, it, it doesn't make that person feel very good at all. However, it's very easy for us to practice this behavior. I, unfortunately, I still do it, but I catch myself and then I make sure I don't do it um, moving forward. So raising your self-awareness is key. Don't watch the clock in a meeting unless you're presenting like I am and I need to. Um, so just be present with yourself. Um, so this, I mean, take a bit of time out in your day to do nothing. And I mean nothing. So not on your phone. It's really difficult and it's really rare and it's such a gift. Um, so meditation, journaling is a really good way of being with yourself without distractions. Just sitting there breathing five, five breaths. Like I, I, I will sometimes just take five breaths, breathe in on the way up, out on the way down or a full-on meditation. Um, some of you will meditate already. Most of you, I would imagine, probably don't because it's not a common thing. But meditation is, is one thing. When I was suffering from mental illness, um, meditation was one thing that really, really, really started to rewire my, my brain and, and get me more positive and just calm me down a little bit. It's an absolute gift. Um, there's plenty of apps out there. Um, I run meditation sessions myself, but um, meditation's a wonderful thing. So being present with yourself, being present with your staff. Now, the thing here is if you are present with yourself, it will give you the space to be present with your staff. So when you're with them, looking at them, spending time with them, and it doesn't have to, you don't have to give them all of your time. So instead of speaking to someone for five minutes and being distracted, speak to them for one minute or two minutes and be fully present with them. It makes such a difference. And your task, I mentioned this earlier when I was speaking to Paul about your task, setting a timer is really key, closing emails down. Now, if you have, if you currently have your emails open on a tab, close it down. If you're getting messages through on your phone, put your phone on, we've got 25 minutes left, put your phone on do not disturb, move it out of your area, be present with this webinar so that you're not getting distracted. Uh, it's so easy to get distracted, to multitask or, or, or task switch really is what, what we call it in, in the coaching world. Like multitasking does not exist. It just means you're doing more tasks less well. So Try to monotask and just direct your focus for a short period of time on something. You'll be way more productive. Okay, so there's some, some things about being present with yourself, your staff, your task. Right in the chat, what one thing, it doesn't have to be any of those things. That's just to try and get you thinking. How are you going to, it might be something you do already or something you're going to start doing or maybe even something you're going to stop doing that's sort of preventing you from from being present with, with yourself or your task. What are you gonna do? What's your one commitment for, for being present? Ty type it in the chat. Jar of joy, I love that, Paul, thank you. Leave personal challenges in the car. Neil, I'd be interested to know your um, technique for that. Do you physically write it on a bit of paper and leave it in the glove box or something? Walk the dog in nature. Nature, Jane, is, is absolutely key. Getting out in the morning, even better. Um, it re, kind of resets our, our brain. Um, avoid side conversations, Marie, good honesty. I'm going to turn off uh, Teams messages, emails for periods of the day. This is That, Rose, is something that really changed my personal productivity is when I sat down to plan a lesson, I took all other distractions out and just spent 10 minutes really focused on that um, or whatever your leadership task is for example um but do not disturb on the door and get tasks done mary great if you're a head teacher um, make sure your staff actually respect that and one thing you can do if you put do not disturb on the door also put a sign up sheet so if someone genuinely needs to see you they can write their name on that sheet and then they um when you finish your task you can go and get that if someone's name's on it then you can go and find it uh, that person so they also know you're aware and you find them um that's something that a lot of head teachers find really really useful but if you're a not a head teacher it's also going to be useful definitely close emails um 
Sadie, I, I, I have a stand up desk and standing up makes me more present. Yes, hence why I'm standing up now. I love it. Get the energy going. Um, sitting down is, is not a good thing. Um, using D&D &D on communication tool would be helpful. I don't know what that is. Um, oh, do not disturb. Um, and would also like hide and place, drop in to ask questions. Great. Okay, good, good chat team. Um, next thing, moving on. Third and final thing, being praising. Being praising doesn't have to be patronizing. It doesn't have to be too big. It, it can happen upwards. So someone less senior to you praising someone more senior or the other way around as well. It shouldn't be so rigid that individuals are only going to expect praise from um, their line managers. However, if you are a line manager, a simple, simple bit of praise for a member of staff can go, does go, an incredibly long way. Um, often people, when I speak to some senior leaders, I say, you know, why, why don't you praise your staff more? Some say, because then everyone will expect it. Now, I want us to rethink that comment. And if anyone in here has ever thought that or knows people that think that, if we did the same with children and we never praised children because everyone, all the other children would expect it, we would have a very, very depressing classroom. So being praising and just catching our staff being good is, is really, really powerful. So a little email just to acknowledge effort, speak to someone personally, avoid only sanctioning staff or calling them into your office for something they haven't done right. Sometimes call them in to actually just say, I just wanted to personally let you know that that thing that you did, that lesson you taught, that conversation with the parent you had, had a massive impact and, and I'm really thankful for it. Um, it goes a long way. When, you, when someone tells you, a good news story respond to that ask questions listen to what they're saying don't don't make it about yourself people get this wrong if you're sharing a story the person who's receiving it will go oh congratulations i remember when i did that or i remember when someone and then that takes it away from that person and on you that memory will come up but avoid it that other person doesn't need to necessarily know it they just want you to validate them and value them and say oh yes well done that's great news how did it feel tell me more whatever that might be that that is that little tiny little shift makes a massive massive difference and that's why i said the focus on them so i'd like you just to reflect who have you praised recently and i don't want you to write this in the chat this is for you Write, write it down. Like actually write this person's name down. Who have you praised recently? And who have you not, but you probably should have done? Who's impressed you? Have you told them? And if you haven't, make a plan now. What are you going to do to tell them? When are you going to do it? And here's the thing. Who is difficult? Who's difficult at the moment in your staff? Because they, they, there is always difficult members of staff. That's just um, a fact of life. But often a difficult member of staff is not a difficult person. They are just moving through something of difficulty. It might be that they don't feel valued, that um, whatever it might be. But you can still validate them, value them and get turn them around. Most people, some people you genuinely can't and managing them out is actually a necessity. Getting them off the bus is a great analogy, but how can you develop your relationship with them? So maybe before they become really difficult, is there something that you can do? Just have a bit more of a conversation, be a bit more present, don't avoid them because they're difficult. Um, so just reflect on that. What can you do? And then I would like you just to whack finally in the chat your one commitment. In fact, actually, let's do all three. One, two, three. So positive, praising, present. So write in positive, one thing you're going to do. Present, one thing you're going to do. Praising, one thing you're going to do. Just write that in the chat. Share it. And let's celebrate how you, as of today, are going to impact your well-being culture, your well-being, be more positive in your culture. What are you going to do? Because this will make a massive difference, I promise you. And if you share this model, take a photo on your mobile phone of the screen. I think we'll probably email out the slides. Um, it's But take a like share this with your team. Like, what one thing can people do? Oh, Marie. 
I'm going to go back for Marie on the slides. Hang on. There you go, Marie. Um, take 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 photo in. A, I'll go back. In fact, what I will do, if people get their mobile phones out, you might want to just take photos of the slides if you haven't already. So I know when I do webinars, sometimes I really like taking photos of the slides. It just really helps me reflect afterwards and then share with other people. So starting from here, that's the model. There, take a photo. There, take a photo. There, take a photo. And then just start writing in your positive praising and present. What, what's your commitment going to be? And then write it down on a notepad. Take a photo of the chat box. Just get some energy going. Get some positive. And just think, if there was 41 on here, I hopefully that's gone up. and might have gone down to 40. Um, if everyone on this call does those three things in their culture, how and consistently as well, if you do that consistently, the shift that that will have in all of the schools around the UK, in, I'm just going to go back up now to see where everyone is from. And just this ripple effect that, that we could have here today, we're all Chelmsford, Luton, London, Southport, we're all Leeds, Rochester, Essex, Manchester. If all of you around the UK actually did one thing in each of these, the, the models, so three things totally, like that's going to be mad. So Rachel, uh, journal what went right in your day, present, ensure that I spend time with my daughter every day. I love that so much. That is that is brilliant. Um, praising, praise staff for the things they've done well and often near. Um, avoiding morning news, silent, uh, present, uh, silent closed messages, apps, um, praising, develop relationships with some of the more difficult members of the team. Oh, Nia, I'm so pleased that that resonated with you. It's it's a difficult one to do, but it, it can transform teams. It really can. Um, start journaling, switch off emails, praise members more often. Paul, listen to music on the way to work and greet many people as I can when I get into school. Present, switch off emails when focusing on tasks. And that then, Paul, might help you with the time thing that you mentioned thank my reception teacher for the amazing work she has done with some of the high high needs send children this week paul i love that last one smile greet people mary concentrate on one person at a time praise more switch off distractions close emails all of the time and um rose i, I think i might miss yours out and um, find one small positive write it down turn off emails and alerts on specific times of the day give a regular and specific praise to each member of my team in writing i love that um and here's here's the here's the bigger gift here's so this this idea being positive being praising being present is or should be behaviors for life not just in your school so if you take this in 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 your workplace and also move it into your private life your relationships in your private life with significant others, partners, friends, family, loved ones, that will shift as well. Because if you can be present, praising, positive with your, with your friends and family, then, then that makes them feel more value. They want to spend more time with you. It just makes the whole thing um, or your whole life richer and, and more beautiful. So um, take these things into your workplace, but just take them as as a bit of a philosophy, a model for, for your life, because I promise you that if you just focus on these three things, it, you will feel a, a shift in, in your own energy and, the, and those around you. Um, oh, we've got some more coming in. This is great. So Andrea, positive um, journaling. But as I said earlier, um, Andrea, when you're journaling, sometimes you do need to have an emotions dump and get all the, all the crap out that's going on in your life. Just work through that. And then you can do three good things at the end or positive stuff. Listen more, praise staff who are not in um, within my team. Love it. Um, okay, team, I 
Um, I'm, I'm a bit early, but um, take a photo of that last slide. I'm, I'm just going to share share my screen. Um, there we go. That is my my personal contact details. Please feel free to get in touch with me if anything has come up that's resonated, or if you, if you are if anyone is genuinely struggling with their mental health at the moment, there is a burnout self check on there. Um, a lot of people don't want to go to the GP, don't want to admit it to themselves that they're struggling. Do the go through the burnout self check. It's it's evidence based. It's all noted on there. And just do the step one st or stage one to five. See where you're at. If you are at stage four, stage four, or even showing signs of stage five, get help. All right. You are very welcome to reach out to me, but go to your GP. It takes strength to do that. I personally took way too long before I went for G uh, support for my GP. Um, and that was due to my own stigma, my own pride, my own ego. Being a male, I believed I should be able to cope and wasn't. Um, but the moment I took action, took control, I felt so much better, started on antidepressants and moved forward. So the thing to be mindful of with this model is if people are in really poor mental health, really close to burnout, then they won't be able to be positive. They will there it's a hormonal shift and they just won't be able to do it so if you notice someone being consistently negative and they seemed overworked in your school then well print off that burnout thing have a meeting with them a nice meeting just to say hey look let's go through this i want to support you um and and it's just some things or just pass it to them nice conversation and just um, or if you've got first aiders for mental health in your school, use them as well, because it's OK sometimes being, yeah, be positive. But sometimes people find it difficult and that's OK. That's a sign that that person needs some support. Um, so thank you so much for your engagement. That is me. Now, what will, as we have got some time, which is rare for me, Caitlin and Sadie will uh, back me up on that. Um Buy some emails. Um, if you want to unmute yourself, I think we've got the capacity to do that. If you want to ask me a question or talk about anything, then 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 we've got um, nine minutes um, to to spare. So so jump on, ask ask away. I can't see people. So if anyone is so if anyone wants to just raise raise their hand, if you want to ask me a personal question about my burnout story, more than happy to to share if you're unable to mute yourselves and you would like to ask a question as well um please do pop it in the chat function okay here we go we've got some stuff coming in um, rose thank you i appreciate the the feedback that's nia have a lovely rest of your day thank you for engaging and, and enjoy whatever it is you're moving on to i've reached out for help this week rose that takes so much guts and courage so I just want to celebrate that with you. Carol, have you got any questions? I, I'm sure you can you can dig deep, Carol, and find a question for me. How can I how can I serve you in the time that we've got? How can I support you? Becky, you've got to go as well. Wonderful, but thank you so much for your time. Aaron, hop off too. No problem, Aaron. Absolutely brilliant having you here today. And one thing I would say is um I I just just want to say thank you to, to Randstad as well, to, to Caitlin, to Sadie, who genuinely are really ahead of the curve with supporting people with, with mental health and well-being. They they reached out to me to find to try and work together to help everyone and and anyone. So this is this has been people are thanking here. And this is really thanks to really Sadie initially who who made the contact with me. So if anyone has got um, needs for recruiting staff, then do make sure you get in touch with them because they're a fantastic um, company to work with. Thank you. Thank you for saying that, Chris. Um, and thank you, you so much for thank you so much for jumping on um, and um, doing this with us today. You know, I think it's safe to say that that was an incredibly useful um, session. 
and thank you to everyone who's joined the call as well for sharing so honestly and so bravely so we really appreciate that um and you know i personally have got lots that i can take away from this as well um, and i think it's very timely and you know please do share any tips that you've got with your staff we will be um sharing this recording afterwards as well along with chris's blog um so i think we'll probably wrap it up there i can see a few more thank yous coming in um, and paul i totally agree with what you're saying just around you know sometimes you do just need someone to listen um, and, you know, the more comfortable we all feel sort of taking that leadership role and enabling people to come to us. I think that's really, really important. So thank you, Chris, for sort of opening up this platform for everyone to share. It's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you for everyone um, who has contributed in the chat box. It makes it so much more engaging for me and everyone. So that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Great. Thank Great. you, everybody. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Bye. Right. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye. Human Forward. Randstad.